Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. And today, yo, the Fed has definitely screwed the pooch. I've always wanted to say that on video. Guys, you already know what to do. Let's hit that intro. Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Welcome everybody back to the channel. Welcome everybody back to the channel. Uh, if you're part of the Boost Motion family, I know you guys already hit the like button. Thank you. And I really appreciate you guys for your support. And if you're new to this Boost in Motion channel, I am Boost in Motion. I do report some of the automotive news, but I am also a car enthusiast. But in this video, we're going to talk about how the Fed has really screwed us and has continued to screw us. But actually, it's actually working on to our favor. So we're going to break it down and we're going to talk about it in this video. So if you're like me, you've been looking to purchase a car. In the last six months, year, two years, and it's been increasingly insane to do it because low amount of new cars, low amount of uh, used cars, prices going through the roof because dealers have been having to outbid other dealers because of supply chain shortages. Well, unfortunately, the world is starting to return back normal. Supply is coming up for new cars. This stuff is improving because there's plenty of different news outlets talking about it and it's getting to more normal, but it isn't back to the pre-pandemic levels. But in the last about three to four months, the Fed start going a lot more deeper into interest rates. About every month, they were raising up interest rates about three quarters of a point or 0.75%. That means it costs more to borrow money, which means you guys pay more when you want to go and borrow money, such as house financing, car financing, or any type of loan where you want to borrow money. But this stuff started to affect the car market in this in a specific way. Because gone are the days that dealers are now overpaying. Shout out to Lucky Lopez. Shout out to YAA. He's a couple other YouTubers and people in the business and field. And they've been following like black book data, wholesale values. And what they have been taking a look at is trends. And what they have noticed is this. Wholesale values are going down. And what does that mean? That's what the dealerships pay at their, uh, at their wholesale auctions. That's only dealers only. And the prices of these cars have been going down. And the reason being that is happening because interest rates are going up. There's no more stimulus. There's no more of this type of money going around where people have disposable money. So the car buying frenzy is over. So now cars are sitting on lots for a little bit longer. Gone are the days when, they, when a car will come in and fly off the shelf. No, it sits there 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, no matter the type of car it is. And it takes time. Also with increasing rates, Guess what happens now? On average, the every week, um, wholesale values have been decreasing by about half a percentage point to about a percentage point. So what does that mean for some of you guys that are, wa are watching? If it's a $100,000 car that the dealer paid for at the auction, right? And the percentage point goes down 1% every week from July to where we're now in November, right? Um, on average, about close to 1%. In just three months' time, that $100,000 car is now only worth about $88,000 or will sell for about $88,000 roughly at an auction. Now, here's the biggest thing that affects the car market when it comes to this. Most of these dealers do not have liquidity or cash. Most of them get their loans. They actually get a loan to go purchase these cars from auctions, and they have to pay every month to pay back this loan with interest because interest is going up because the value of the cars are going down. Guess what happens? If they paid $100,000 for the car and in three months' time, 90 days, it's only worth $88,000, that bank comes knocking at the door, you got to get rid of this car or we're going to start asking for some collateral or liquidity or cash because it's not like they bought one car. They might have spent their whole fleet of cars might be worth a million dollars. So if their whole lot is a, as a, they spent a million dollars on a whole lot of cars, right? And they lost. 12% in a craziest scenario, that means they oh, that their lot is now worth $880,000. Those banks are going to come knocking. We need about a hundred grand from you, or we may actually repossess the car. They would actually take the cars back because at the end of the day, they're trying to protect their asset and or their money, and they need to recoup that and get that back. So now what the dealers are doing is this, and I see the game that they're playing. 
They know they're paying attention to the trends. They know that the car prices are going down, depending on the specific cars. But majority, they know generally the car prices are going down about half to a percentage point per week. Within the last week, ending October, it went down 3%. You guys may think that's a small number, 3%. But compared to two weeks before that, it was only about a percentage point. This shows you that it is starting to accelerate. And I know this is going to make a lot of dealers very very cautious and scary now because now they know wholesale now is also going to readjust within the next couple of weeks. The prices are going down. A lot of dealers are going to try their best to hold the cars at these specific high prices because they paid almost retail. Remember, wholesale and retail will be different. Retail is what they price uh, charge the car for you. How much they charge? How much they charge you for the car? So if the car was a hundred thousand dollars for them. And they put it up for 115 because that's the going rate, right? But now the car has went down 12 percent. It's 88,000. You would think the the dealership will want to readjust that, but no, not a lot of them are doing that. What they're saying is, let's leave it at 115. Maybe we can catch somebody. Let's do a price adjustment at 112. But after the car is sitting there for three months, remember they're paying back that loan. They're losing liquidity. So now, if you go take a look at certain price trends. On certain on what um on car gurus, you could go look up price trends for like a Toyota Camry or Infiniti Q50 or Mercedes S Class, and you go look at specific cars. They might have been up there. For, go to 90 days. You might take a look, and you would see that there's some price differences. So on video, I want to show you guys some of these price drops, and I'm gonna pick some cars that I'm te technically actually looking at. I know the average day person may not be looking at some of these cars, but I am looking at these cars because, you know, I like my high performance cars. So this is a uh, BMW M3 X Drive. Now, this car is a highly wanted car, right? In an automotive uh, automotive platform. So it has sat at the lot on car grooves for about 40 days. It's only about 30 days. And just uh, 40 days time, the car was priced at 102 and now is at 94. The price is adjusting. But now... Let's go take a look and see if there's any other cars that just may pop up. Let's go to the 90-day rule, right, and see what other cars may pop up that we're like, wow, that's a huge, um, huge difference. And also, if you make this part of the video, hopefully I got earned your like button. And plus, Car Grooves is a good site because, once again, it uses – this is retail value. This isn't actually wholesale, but this is a good way for you to actually know – if you're getting like the car for a really good price that you're not really being screwed over, right? So let's pick, uh, for instance, this one, 2021 BMW M3 competition. They want $82,000 for it. It's, wow, that's not the one I'm looking for. I want, I want one that has been on the lot for about 90 days. And I know I picked 90 days here, 90 to 150 days. All right, cool. Uh, let's pick this one. Let's see if this one's been on the dealership lot. This one's been on a dealership lot for, you know, it says 115 days and we had a price drop of 1000. That's not really going to work for this video. Um, let me just readjust this. Bear with me guys. We're here. We're still talking. We're cooking. I'm going to show you some of the price drops that I've seen. I'm sorry that I didn't jump right on it right in this video for you guys. Um, Okay, and we're going to put the mileage nationwide. Cool. Let's look at a car that's inflated in price or something that's a little bit close. Um, let's pick this blue one. Let's see if this one's been at the dealership lot for a little while. All right, this one's been at the dealership lot for 94 days. So this is right around that 90-day rule. That means they made three payments to their actual uh, financing company. And the price drop is about $10,000. It's been on a lot from early August, late July, and they priced it originally at 104000 And about a month later, they reduced the car to about ninety five. And ever since then, it sat there for about, well, for quite a long time, about three months now. And it's priced at about ninety three. Now, it doesn't show anything for October, so it may not be updated. The car might have been sold. But this kind of lets you know roughly that they had to cut about 10% off the price of, of this car alone to make an actual change and, and, and make the actual difference in change. And it just opens my eyes on what's really going on in this car market because as a patient buyer, you need to be patient. 
And there's always going to be lead, lead, uh, lead indicators and lag. And retail is going to lag compared to the lead, which is the drop in um, wholesale rates. So if wholesale rates have dropped 12%, just say, for instance, and matter of fact, let's just use the last four of last month of October. Interest rates have dropped about five to six percent for the all of October put together. So if a dealership purchased a car for 100 grand and now it's six percent less, guess what? It's only worth about ninety four thousand dollars. Right. We're not talking about anyone who had it for two, three months. That means technically the car price should readjust based on retail six percent. But these dealerships are going to lag. That's why you got to let them go through the pain. If anyone comments below, I know some of you guys are salesmanship. Y'all might actually own dealerships. Anyone might be watching. But I understand that you got to still keep your lights on, that you want to pay this stuff on the table. But it's unfortunate that you overpaid for cars because you thought there was always going to be money just bounce around because it was so good. It was so good. You guys are making money over fist the last two years. And a lot of people overpaying. Well, guess what? That stuff is gone. Right. We need to return to the normal car market pre pandemic where a car that is 100 grand gets hit with a 10 percent depreciation in the first year. I'm not going to give you guys 105 grand for a car because it's supply chain shortage. No, that stuff is over. People are put are positioned to wait. We know that it costs more money to borrow, uh, costs more money to borrow money. And we're going to be patient every week. One guy's watching. Every week, on average, the wholesale value goes down 1%. Let these cars get some time to sit on lots. Give it another month, two, three months. Give it time. Next month, uh, the Fed is also going to raise the rate possibly another 0.5 to 0.75 percentage. Period. It's going to cost them more money, and they're always going to continue to readjust. It's unfortunate that... Some dealerships may go down because they were over leveraged and it's unfortunate, but I believe also I'm not trying to come at dealerships, but I am. Some of y'all have really predatory um, business practices. I remember even it was brought to the Senate floor or to the House representative floor, a bill that will have some kind of transparency about what is actually even in an ad to actually purchase a car. That, that a dealership would give you slight misinformation saying this car is $90,000 and you come there and they said it's an upcharge of five to six grand because of a dealer adjustment. This stuff is not right. This is not fair. It's false advertising. I hate to say it. If I see a, a PlayStation, anyone plays games, if a play, if a matter of fact, sneakers, if a sneaker is $299 at Foot Locker, right? And you break $199. With cars, the reason why CarMax does so well is it's one price, they're clear, and they cut, and there's no BS. There's none of this nonsense going on. They're transparent. That's why CarMax is still around. But these other predatory dealers with these ideas completely suck. I even have a video on my channel where me and my um, friend, he wanted to go pick, pick up a Mercedes truck, and the, the price brought us in, but then the next minute it was $15,000 on just nonsense that they wanted to include. And we said, no, we don't want all of that. All that FI stuff, we don't want none of that. And even then, they still wanted to give us another upcharge of five grand. So in a way, I think this is the best thing for it to actually happen. I think it's best for we to us for us to have this correction and the strong survive and the weak. Well, I'm sorry, I get swallowed, I get eaten up because bad business practices are not going to make it to the end of the day. Period. This is something one of the biggest market corrections across the United States, across the financial district, and across the world. And if you ain't strong enough to go through this and hang out here, you will get eaten up. Darwinism 101. Outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Hopefully, I earned your like button. Hopefully, this video was informative. I am Boost in Motion. This is pretty much me once again, just reporting the news. But thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, you can add me at Boost Motion IG and Facebook. Also, I have an uh, email at Boost Motion at gmail.com. Otherwise, than that, guys, I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, back to Boost. And Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost in Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.